team game. I know it's a team sport, but the Yankees have been riddled with injuries, and we are in mid-September. It's not going to get better soon. It doesn't feel like. Aaron Judge, Garrett Cole. Aaron Judge wants a lot of money. Garrett Cole has a lot of money. They're being paid for this particular reason. Drive this train home. I know baseball is not built the same way that football basketball is, but these guys have to be the ones that drive the Yankees to where they want to go. Keith? Yeah, they, they I mean, <laughs> it's funny when you look at those two. One is hyper consistent, overly consistent, like out of this world consistent yeah. with his approach and what he does at the plate. The other one, he's got otherworldly talents, but he's not consistent enough on a uh, every outing basis. I mean, w- we give him his props for the strikeouts and we give him his props for the career that he's put together. But it's a roll of the dice with Garrett Cole. Uh, his last outing was great. Yep. We don't know what his next one will be. We we go into his last outing thinking, oh, man, there was a you know postponement, double header. Oh, the first game goes extra inning. You're on this creature a habit thing on him, aren't you? You're like, oh, throw it off by just this much. What Garrett Cole are we going to get? Because he's broken out of his routine or he's thrown off of his process and he showed up. But, yeah, you, you pay the guy $36 million a year to be an ace. And he, you know, as far as the Yankees go, he goes. He has to lead the way. He has to be the ace of the staff. Yeah, we've gotten some good performances. Last year. Let's not forget, he was peaking at this particular point last year before the hamstring injury. And I firmly believe that affected everything we saw after that. But he was earning his money and peaking at the right time last year. Yeah, COVID hit him. He had the hamstring. And then the Yankees faltered. I, I, I will never get over the fact that here we are with the Rays again. That last series with the Rays in the Bronx, the Yankees won one game and they had to walk that Sunday game off. If they were able to take, they should have taken that Friday night game. That one was hard. If they take that Friday night game, no. they they host the wild card. Then Garrett Cole doesn't have to be in the bullpen at Fenway with the fans right on top of him. These guys have uh, stuffed animal Kermit the Frogs and they're making fun of his voice. <laughs> and then John Carlos Stanton doesn't have to hit the ball off the green monster. Those balls go out into left field bleachers. Uh, I don't know, man. I think, you know, as we get down to the wire here, as we approach October, you're going to lean on those guys, right? Because who do you have? That's why I even look at Glaber Torres. I'm like, hey, kid, you're supposed to be a superstar, yeah. right? You're supposed to be one of the guys we can depend on. We need you. You can't be going 0 for 4, striking out three times, looking for a walk. So, Especially when you're batting behind Judge right now. You've yeah. got to be able to produce in those well, see, that's what I'm like, all right, I don't know. Um, I don't know if Boone makes the lineups, but that's what I'm like, blame Boone. You got you got Gleyber Torres batting third. You got IKF batting fourth. Like, Who's going to bat in front of him? Who's going to bat worst, behind him? What's, what's the worst that, that could happen? Right now? No, there's there's no other options. We got Miguel Andujar uh, DHing yesterday, and, and he came alive. I didn't even know John Carlos Stanton was available. I mean, it, it, it is what it is right now. You're fu- You're figuring it out with less. Randy, how how comfortable are you with the idea of riding Cole and Judge? I mean, I kind of made the comparisons this week, you know, uh, like Danny Manning leading Kansas to the NCAA championship. You know, I'm thinking Kirk Gibson and Oral Hershiser kind of thing for the Dodgers. That was not a great team, but they, you know, they did great things. There's a run in there if these guys carry the Yankees there. Uh, for me, the the focus is more on Aaron Judge getting opportunities to help the team win. You know, yeah. when, he, when he does have his at bats, I think uh, the the pitching staff is fantastic. I'm not as worried about Garrett Cole. There's Nesta Cortez might actually be the ace of the team uh, this year. Uh, you have Montas. Hopefully, that star in Tampa gets him going. Um, they pitched well. The bullpen is starting to, to yeah. come around. Now. I think that the pitching compared to where we are this year compared to last year is significantly better. Um, so I, I don't think you have to ride Garrett as much as we need to uh, when you think about the the whole of the entire Yankees pitching staff. Uh-huh. Um, you know, they'll get Seve back soon. Uh, hopefully Britain joins them. Um, Nestor obviously came back. So I'm not as worried about leaning on Garrett as much as I am concerned about Aaron Judge getting legitimate opportunities to influence a game just because he doesn't really have any protection. And I think – it really highlights like how important DJ LeMahieu is to this team. 
Um, I know like the conventional thinking is, you know, who's hitting behind judge, but to me is who's always hitting in front of judge. Sure. Like if you have traffic on the bases. It's a much more difficult decision to pitch to judge or not. If yeah. you have first and second or guys on first now, are you creating more, do you want to create more traffic intentionally or, or are you like going to take this risk to, to pitch to Aaron? So um, I think LeMahieu's presence and lack thereof right now um, is really impacting them more than people uh, have been discussing lately. Um, hopefully Stan comes back for this series and he has a little bit of protection behind him, but finding somebody that can get on base in front of judge feels crucial. And right now they don't have that guy like Aaron Hicks, is unplayable as far IKF. as IKF. I, I said the other day on Twitter to someone, I'm like, I am convinced that they do not want to put IKF in the leadoff spot. They'll put him everywhere else. But IKF is starting to hit now. Why not put him in the leadoff spot? He's got speed. He steals bases. Is it something that they absolutely won't do? I think they like guys who take pitches to bat in the first inning. I think, and it, when you're Aaron Hicks, hit, so that's why Hicks is well, there. Yeah, I, a, a big part of it, you know, the ability to draw a walk and get on base in front of Judge, like Randy's saying. I think what if you look at the way they've constructed lineups or tried to when they're healthy, you know, trying to get a 20 pitch inning, 25 pitch inning on a, on the starter in the first inning is kind of sets up everything in motion because you're probably pushing across at least one run if that happens, or you're working a guy pretty good to the point where you've knocked in, you've knocked maybe you know, the sixth inning off of him and he's, he's out in the fifth inning. I think that drives a lot of what they do, but you know, Keith, if Randy's pointing to DJ LeMahieu and it's, I mean, clearly he's one of the most important players for the Yankees. Um, who's, who's your guy right now that you want to lean on? If it's not judge is Torres, the guy that has to step up. No, it's Peraza. I'm already nervous for the kid. He's okay. got to step out there in the six hole tonight and he's going to hear the Derek Jeter and, He's going to feel some of that. And this is going to be the biggest crowd tonight that he's played in front of in the Bronx. He's absolutely he's already thrust oh, into like, hey, man, we need you to be a star. Uh, and that could be a lot for a kid. Also, I'm looking at Oswaldo Cabrera. Those two guys have brought this young energy, the spark that everyone was saying we needed a couple weeks ago. Um, at, at this point with Glaber Torres, I, like I said, I know he's supposed to be the guy, but I can't depend on him to be the guy. And uh, I know what I'm going to get from Judge. IKF now is a guy that we're we're feeling more confident. Like it's kind of weird. IKF comes up to the plate, and I feel like I've got a better chance all of a sudden than, than I did in the beginning of the season. It's hard. Um, it swings so wildly, right? And I mean, <laughs> listen, he goes zero for four tonight in a couple of spots. You're going to swing back the other way, going to Saturday. Um, you know, Randy. Well, Keith, like, uh, go ahead. I will say, you know, sometimes it's good to be young and naive. You know, so sure. with somebody like Peraza, I mean, he's already had big hits, like getting on base in front of Judge, um, yeah. had a couple extra base hits. He might not know any better. He might just say, oh, there's 50,000 people here. Derek Jeter's here. I, I got to show out. You know, this is my yeah. opportunity yeah, yeah. to kind of legitimize what everybody's saying or thinking about me. So, you know, it could it could go the other way. It could be a positive where they're just like they feed off that energy and, you know, contribute in ways that we might not expect. That's the thing you don't know sometimes with these guys. Because I remember last year at one point when the Yankees got hit with a bunch of COVID cases, they had to rush up like three guys all at once, right? And I remember watching during batting practice and a couple of coaches are going over to him. And I said to him later, I said, What's, what, are you, what were you telling them? He said, did you see these guys when they walked out here? All they're doing is this, is they're looking around. They're looking at the upper deck. Like they've never seen the third deck before. It's like, oh, whoa. Okay, we yeah. got to bring these guys back in because if they're going to, you know, they can't play uh, comfortably if they're, if they're not comfortable in their surroundings, like, like focus them in. These guys look like they are expecting to be here. Cabrera, Peraza, like they knew that this is where they wanted to be. And that moment isn't too big, but that still doesn't mean they're not going to struggle. We saw Cabrera go through what? No for 25 before that big hit. Um, he won a game though. I mean, you know, he, he did win a game for them. And, Clutch. and Clutch jeans. Some that, of these guys he, got it. Yeah. And not only that, I mean, he, he saved the game defensively. You know yeah. what I mean? And like after the game, when he spoke with uh, Meredith Morakovic, he just kept talking about, I compete. Like the only yeah. thing I care about is competing. So I think when you have that attitude, you're not looking at the third deck, you're looking at the other team and you're like, okay, how am I going to beat these guys? Which, you know, and when we talk about Derek, that's the only thing that he thought about too. Like, how am I going to win tonight? So hopefully Peraza and Cambrera 
you know, have that same mentality going into these big games this weekend. Aaron Judge is under the microscope. And earlier this week, Randy Levine, the Yankees team president, uh, talked about his contract situation a little bit on the show, a podcast with Joel Sherman and John Heyman from the New York Post. Um, I, listen, I wasn't surprised by anything he said. Like, I mean, you know, you're kind of almost public negotiating at that point. Why would he give anything else away? Uh, like, I've looked at it as the Yankees are going to make a really good offer for Judge. It's going to be up to Judge to decide if he wants that or not. I, I think if we see that Judge doesn't come back, it's not going to be because the Yankees didn't, quote, offer him enough money. I think they're going to offer him plenty of money, Keith. Yeah, I went back and listened to Randy speak, and it was only 20 minutes, but uh, he, he didn't say a lot. But if you listen to how he spoke, he, he said enough, right? He said he looks at Aaron Judge, and the Yankees look at Aaron Judge as an all-time Yankee. Uh, he said they're going to make a competitive offer. To me, I'm like, there is no competitive offer. You don't have to compete with anyone. You're the Yankees. That's your guy. <laughs> you you outbid everyone, and you keep your guy, and you keep your guy happy. Yeah. Um, you know, and and they also he also spoke to, uh, you know, the difference that like fans I don't think realize like like there's there's Hal Steinbrenner, there's Cashman, right? There's there's different um, there's different responsibilities and. You know, when free agents aren't acquired, like fans want to blame Hal and say he's cheap. Uh, but, you know, there's player personnel and there's guys that look at talent. And Randy said, he's like, I'm not a talent evaluator. I'm not a talent guy. So, I mean, I didn't take too much away from that. I think a lot of people wanted something to be mad at, um, something to, yeah. to run with. But all in all, I really d- do think that Aaron Judge is going to stay a Yankee. Um, And that's the last thing I'll say about Randy Levine. He also kind of hinted at the fact that the Yankees offer more than the other 29 baseball teams can offer because he's being a Yankee. And he talked about, you know, Babe Ruth and Roger Maris and uh, this home run chase and Aaron doing that in the Yankees uniform. And I don't know. I think he's the next captain. I think he's going to make three hundred million dollars. I think he's going to sign an eight, maybe nine year contract. And the Yankees know that he is everything for their team and their business and their brand right now and it'd be a huge mistake to let him go over a couple dollars they're uh worth six billion they just acquired ac milan uh there's people at the stadium every single night buying their merch no matter whether they're struggling winning five games up compartmentalizing this baseball budget sometimes and that's the part that gets frustrating you're right they've got all this money we can't make them spend it. Like people say, you know, like when I report on, okay, I don't think they're going over this number. I don't think they're going after this player. So like, why, you know, why? Like I can't make them spend it. I know they have plenty of money. And Sweeney, but- they, if they're not signing free agents, right. If you're going to, pa- if you, if your need, you got to bring the kids up. If you, Well, if your need is shortstop and this past year was the best free agent shortstop class in, in years. And yeah. if you've passed on all of those guys, right, because you don't want to sign a Jacoby Ellsbury type contract, yep. who are you going to pay? You pay an Aaron Judge. Yes. You pay your own. If you're not going to pay somebody from the outside that comes in, this is a guy that you know can play here. This yeah. is a guy that you know handles himself well off the field, knows how to speak to the media. Like, this is the guy that you pay. If you're not paying free agents, this is a guy that you pay. And he's a guy that that brings people together. I mean, he's got a different kind of personality. And like, you know, Randy, I like, you know, you got into a little bit of Jeter's leadership and his style of leadership in this doc, you know. And I I think you know, and even looking back, you could tell that that Derek regretted some of those choices and actions as a leader. And I think Judge is a different kind of person. He has a different kind of personality that that I think embraces that side of it maybe more than Derek did. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I think that uh, the little I know of Aaron Judge, I think that he has a little different worldview than Derek does. Um, I think everything that Derek did was in the, the prism of trust and loyalty and, um, you know, being comfortable around people. And just because I think of his experiences growing up in, in Michigan, I think that that really painted the way that he looked at the world and how he was going to interact with others. I think it's a little different with Aaron Judge. Um, I don't think that Judge comes across as guarded as Derek. Um, I think that he's a little bit more communal when it comes to a locker room, I think. Um, And I think that makes a huge difference. I don't think that, um, you know, he 
not that Derek did this intentionally, but I think just the way that he went about his business, there could have been people that, you know, couldn't really approach Derek or never felt like they got in that inner circle. I don't think there's an inner circle with Aaron judge. I will say though, Aaron judge didn't win a title his rookie rookie year. So Correct. things are different yeah. when you're a champ, as soon as you get there and you're one of the major reasons why you have a ring. So I think Derek's career is vastly different from Aaron's just because one won a, a ton <laughs> right away. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the other one hasn't. So um, I think that also has a lot to do with it. You know, you just have a championship medal and you did it with your guys. You know, you came up as a core and you guys won together. You know, it wasn't like they just went through this free agency frenzy and all of a sudden it started uh, winning championships. They, they did it with guys that they came up with. That's not the case with, with judge. Yeah. So um, I think it's a little different just because of their experiences as Yankees. Um, but yeah, I, I think, I think, I don't think judge is going anywhere. I mean, I think he's going to be a Yankee. I, I've never been worried about that. The question is, are they going to get anybody else beyond judge? And, you know, right. that's what my concern is like, you have other holes on this roster yeah. Is it just be a Garrett Cole situation where you bring judge back and you're just like, okay, we're done playing in the market. You know, that's a larger concern for me than whether or not judge comes back. I think he comes back. I, I agree with Keith totally with those numbers and how important he is. Um, I didn't really look too much into Levine's comments. I just, I just think Randy Levine needs to stop talking publicly. Yeah. Uh, it's like it, it almost, he oh, wants wait. to get his shine on, Randy. Randy, yeah, it's not Randy working, and Randy. Yeah. He's, he's not. Listen, he's not. He's not a hot dog vendor. He's the president yeah. of the Yankees. Okay, <laughs> you know when he, you know he's he can, when he talks, everybody listens. Yeah, and but it's like sometimes, man, we don't we don't need to listen to that. Say I mean, less. Say less. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, say more uh, when you say less. I get yeah, it. Exactly. I get so, um, you know, that was my reaction more than like a concern that they're not going to bring Judge back. I mean, I think I think he's going to be a Yankee for life. Uh, you know. This this might look bad in a couple of months, but uh, I never really felt like a a worry that he wasn't going to come back or isn't yeah. going to come back. Let's uh, let's put a bow on this, Keith. Uh, big series coming up here, Tampa Bay. You and I are going to talk again on Monday. You feeling good? You feeling lucky? What do you think? No, I think uh, the pitching matchup favors Tampa. Drew Rasmussen tonight. Um, Corey Kluber again. The Yankees, I think, will face Corey Kluber for the fifth time this season and i think it's tbd for sunday but like i said i just feel like the rays are comfortable here i feel like it's going to be kevin cash versus aaron boone and kevin cash wins that a lot of times and uh there needs to be a sense of urgency which i think there is but with this team uh, this, with this team right now being so different and then different guys like marwin gonzalez has to play first base and, and, right. and he's not playing it well. That's part of the problem. Part of the problem with last night's the replay thing is, you know, Gonzalez with the with the catch and the feed, and he could have saved another error earlier in the game. I mean, that's part of the problem here. You know, they're not they have they don't have enough players for the right positions. Need a little bit of luck, um, but I know you know what can happen will. And uh, the, the Yankees got lucky this week already. They got lucky running those lineups out against they the Twins. Lucky the Twins were in town. The, right? the Twins cooperate. The Rays do not. So I'm not. I'm not optimistic going into this series. I think okay. this is the series where we see that that lead uh, shrink down, and uh, it won't be panic time, but it'll certainly be worry time. What I'll say is is this to put a bow on it. Tampa, go look at Tampa's schedule after they face the Yankees. So, you know, they've they might knock us down a little bit, but then they've got to go, they've got to go face Toronto and Houston a ton. So, yes. Yeah. So it's going to play, it's going to work out a little bit. Uh, Randy, you feeling good? You, first of all, you excited for tonight and you're feeling good. I'm um, very excited for tonight. I'm happy that the fans and Derek will uh, say hello once again and, you know, uh, share, show love and share love with one another. So I think that that's great. And, um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I feel confident. Like, I mean, yeah. I just feel like if sometimes if you just compete, good things happen. So I think that I don't think that the Rays have that much of a pitching advantage. Um, I think Montas has been great against the Rays all year. Um, he's kind of been their version of Clu Corey Kluber. You know, they yeah, can't yeah. really figure him out. Um, and you just got to compete. I mean, I, I always feel comfortable and confident. Uh, so I, I just don't think the Rays are a great team. So I don't think that. 
you know, they're yeah, going to do things to like make this like insurmountable or something like that. I think there'll be competitive games and I am worried about Boone, but uh, beyond <laughs> that, I think if the Yankees can execute a little bit more than the Rays, they'll be fine. I mean, I think it just comes down to winning at the margins uh, outside the Rays, of the majors. So the Rays are a worrisome team. They're not a great team. You know, and right. that's maybe that probably is wonder a- Franco. Yeah. Well, you yeah. With wonder Franco. Wonder, wonder and, Franco is out there. They're yeah. different. And has uh, how long is it going to take for him to get his stride, right? He hasn't been out there for a little while. So we'll see what happens. And maybe by the time you and I talk next week, Keith, uh, Harrison Bader will be part of this. We'll get into that yeah. because, you know, you know, Randy mentioned defense. You know, this is this that's what this deal was about is doubling down on defense. And we'll see if he becomes part of this by the time we get to this next week. Randy, can't thank you enough. Congratulations on all the success this summer uh, and enjoying uh, or trying to enjoy the Yankee season. The captain is available to stream still on ESPN Plus, correct? Yep. All seven episodes. Fantastic. Um, it was wonderful to watch the first time, and I know that uh, many people are watching it over and over again. And thanks for uh, not leaving me all in the editing room floor. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, <laughs> I Keith, appreciate it. Have a great weekend. Uh, we will talk on Monday and wrap up this series. This is BXB, Bronx Baseball, new podcast from Odyssey, and it is available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Make sure, sure to follow, subscribe, and review and all that jazz. Uh, We'll talk to you next week, and hopefully the Yankees are still in first place. They might be. Thanks, everybody, for listening, and thanks to Randy and Keith for joining us.